Jonathan Davenport is back on a tour for 2023, and we'll talk about why, plus news from Ryan Timms and Buddy Kofoid and more. Let's go. It's Thursday, December 22nd. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. I got to be honest, after the season he had in 2022, I did not expect this bit of news from Jonathan Davenport that came out yesterday. A pick and choose schedule, 24 wins and something like 80 race has led to more than $2 million in earnings for the year. But for 2023, Jonathan Davenport and the Double L 49 team are headed back out on tour with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Davenport was last a full-timer in 2021, ending up third behind champion Tim McCready. His last series championship was in 2019 when he topped McCready and Josh Richards. This decision to go back full-time with Lucas joins a list of changes for the team that includes the loss of crew chief Jason Durham and the hiring of Corey Fosvet. They've got a new tire guy in Michael Bixby, and the team's shop is moving back to Batesville, Arkansas from Durham's place in Kentucky. Davenport joins a growing list of Lucas regulars for next season that will uh, include reigning champion Tim McCready, Hudson O'Neill in the rocket car, Devin Moran with double, uh, double down, Ricky Thornton Jr., and then most likely names like Tyler Erb, Earl Pearson Jr., Garrett Alberson, and Dalton Wilson. In the release from the team, Davenport said, quote, The series really worked hard on some things like minimizing their schedule a little bit and boosting their point fund, which made it more attractive for us to jump back out on tour, unquote. If you probably remember from PRI, Lucas has added cash to their point fund for 2023, with the champion now taking home $200,000 from a possible $935,000 total fund that also includes another $66,000 in bonuses. These increases were alongside the announcement that the series will have a playoff format for their championship next season, where the top four drivers will battle it out for the title at Eldora during the Dirt Track World Championship. In 2022, after the big money year Brandon Overton had in 2021, the cool thing to do was go pick and choose. Davenport did it, as did Jimmy Owens and Chris Madden, but now both Madden and Davenport are back full-time on a series. So what's changed? Well, as Davenport mentioned, the points funds are getting better. Lucas Champ now gets $200,000. The Outlaw Champ now gets $150,000. There are also added bonuses along the way, and guys can still race the crown jewels and with series like Flow and XR. The XR schedule is much lighter next year as they have kind of refocused their efforts, and that might have a small part in all of this. There's also no million-dollar race happening at Eldora this season for the late models. Uh, neither national tour schedules against Eldora anyway, but not running a tour allowed those guys to really focus more on that event. They took some weeks off, worked on their car, etc. And for Davenport specifically, the Dirt Track World Championship moving to Eldora and being the site of the championship decider plays right into his hands. He's insanely good at Eldora, and all he has to do by season's end is be in that top four. No need to try and match the consistency we've seen from Tim McCready or a guy like Brandon Shepard. Just hang in that top four and go win the final race for the title. If a driver gets into that final four, they will earn at least $5,000 in bonuses and possibly as much as $25,000. And even fourth in the championship pays $100,000. So these guys that go the distance will be guaranteeing themselves a nice chunk of change. And that seems to be the question mark in all of dirt racing right now with these big series. Do guys go with the guaranteed money, sign on for a tour, or try and chase big paychecks at a much bigger risk? That is very much what some of the sprint car teams are weighing at this exact moment. As unexpected as it seemed to be for Davenport, this move actually makes a ton of sense. Uh, the other driver news from yesterday concerned the futures for Ryan Timms and Buddy Kofoy. We talked last Wednesday on The Daily about the Chili Bowl field, and I mentioned that Kofoid was listed as being in the 71W, while Tim's was in the 67, which had been Kofoid's number the last couple of seasons. That was our first clue that maybe something was up here, and we got clarity on the situation yesterday. For 2023, Ryan Tim's will take over that Mobile One 67 midget at Keith Coons Motorsports from Buddy Kofoid and chase the USAC midget title. And that title is the one that Kofoid has won the previous two seasons in a row. Tim's told Speedsport that the deal got set in motion after he won with KKM at Red Dirt Raceway back in July. Tim's was impressive in 2022 in a sprint car as well, and we will still see him plenty with the wing on next year. He tweeted he'll pick and choose sprint car races between midget shows, the total schedule of around 75 races. And that seat was open at KKM because Kofoid is going to focus on sprint car racing for 2023 with a full national schedule planned with Crouch Motorsports. Kofoid ran select races with Crouch this year, which included a World of Outlaws win at Husets. 
In a story at SprintCarUnlimited.com, team owner Leighton Crouch said they will run 80-plus races with a heavy focus on the Outlaws and All-Stars. In between, Kofoid will also fit in a handful of midget shows and maybe some pavement starts as well. With Kofoid behind the wheel and veteran crew members like Brad Alexander, Stephen Ham Riley, and Jacob Weaver, this team could hurt some feelings next year. Uh, one other Chili Bowl note for you from this morning. We've had a bit of a shakeup with the KKM lineup. Reinbold Underwood is bringing four cars uh, with uh, drivers Hayden Reinbold, Alex Bright, Emerson Axum, and Dazen Persley. Persley was originally slated to be in a KKM car and is actually on the entry list right now in a KKM car. But we've had a late change here. Persley had already announced a full USAC sprint car run in 2023 with KO Motorsports, and now it appears as though his tenure with Keith Coons is over. Emerson Axum also uh, basically confirmed what we had already pretty much knew, that Clausen Marshall is not competing at the Chili Bowl this year. He basically confirmed that on Twitter this morning. In some schedule updates from this week, the Extreme Outlaw Midgets have added three more tracks to their 2023 slate. They'll take on Ohio Valley Speedway July 28th, Half Valley Speedway Park on August 11th, and Highland Speedway on September 16th. The series has also posted an $80,000 point fund with the champion at taking home twenty five dollars of that. Remember that all of these extreme shows are in addition to the USAC schedule and no dates are in conflict. So it'll be a good year to be a midget team. Along with the schedule news, Chase McDermott and Mount Stout Motorsports have become the first team to commit to the full season with the extreme midgets. Uh, McDermott was an extreme winner at uh, in 2022 at Davenport. Uh, there were also uh, a couple of changes on the NARC schedule yesterday. Uh, they're adding a race at Antioch on April 29th, and then the originally scheduled race on April 29th at Silver Dollar. That race has been moved to May 6th. And then both nights of the Peter Murphy Classic will now be at Hanford. To see the full NARC schedule, head over to NARC410.com. Looking at the daily streaming schedule, again, just Flow Racing 24-7 and Dirt Vision now going on. To see what's playing every day, head over to DirtTracker.com slash watch tonight. And I know there are a bunch of new people tuning into the show every day, so I just wanted to quickly say welcome. Glad to have you here. Glad you're tuning in. Uh, besides this YouTube show that you watch, uh, you can also download and listen to these episodes on your favorite podcast apps, including Apple and Spotify. The show actually started out as um, m mainly being a podcast, and I was just doing YouTube kind of on the side, but it's the YouTube stuff has kind of blown up, so that's where we've kind of stuck with, but you can still find the podcast. There's also cool stuff over at DirtTracker.com, including updated news and the ever-growing analytics section. I also post full show transcripts there every day as well. Uh, if you or someone you know is hard of hearing and still wants to check out the show, if you want to grab some Dirt Tracker merch like stickers or hats uh, or t-shirts, head over to shop.dirttracker.com. All right, that's it for the show today. Have a good Thursday. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back here tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.